Yeah, Jeez, why, why do you think they called bumpers scary? <laughs> I don't know. Because <laughs> they come at the beginning, at the end, like bumpers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Alex, you're a marketing guy. Do you like that design behind Paul? Does that that sweet logo thing look pretty cool <laughs> to you? <laughs> hey, I forgot to hit the record button. <laughs> Yeah, um, that's, that's really professional, isn't it? <laughs> it? Well, this is a professional podcast. <laughs> I met her in a parking lot and was handed two little Yorkies. And the only person I knew that knew Yorkies was Paul. So I called Paul. <laughs> <and> said, Paul. <laughs> Sweet Talk is a weekly 20-minute podcast brought to you by the Continuing Education and Workforce Training Division of Idaho State University's College of Technology. Find us on Apple Podcast, Spotify, and SoundCloud, and subscribe today. Now it's time to get started with Sweet Talk. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sweet Talk, our weekly podcast here at Idaho State University's Continuing Education and Workforce Training. I am, as always, your co-host, Paul Dickey, the Video Instruction Manager and Apprenticeship Coordinator here at Sweet. Um, as always... Joining me is our um, <laughs> illustrious leader. I say that every week, don't I, Gary? Yeah, Gary I'm Salazar, getting... our director. <laughs> <laughs> I'm becoming more illustrious every week. <laughs> I only do that because I want that raise, man. I want that raise. <laughs> um, hanging in there. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm desperately waiting for it. <laughs> How are you doing today, Gary? I'm doing great. It's another Friday, uh, Friday morning here at uh, Idaho State University and uh, the weather's Weather's not like it was. It's kind of chilled down a bit, but I'm still looking forward to uh, it isn't snowing today and it's going to be a great weekend. So I'm doing awesome. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah our regular listeners know that we typically record these on, fri on mm -hmm. Friday. And uh, so we're always, you know, that's the one thing I think why we always have a good time is because we know we have the Friday coming and the weekends just upon us. And, and we're very energized to do these podcasts each, each yeah, week. Yeah, absolutely. And hey, I also join us is our uh, our our, our coordinator for marketing, a great coordinator, Angela Wilhelm, who does a fantastic job for us. Angela, you helped set this one up. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm very excited. Uh, our guest today is part of our uh, college readiness type of uh, series that we've been hosting. So I'm very, very excited to uh, have him on today. Yeah, so that, it is good. And, and the series uh, that we uh, that we've put together that you've put together have been very, very informative. A lot of folks uh, can really get a good eye into what goes on here at Idaho State University and some of our, our great programs. We are joined today, everybody, by Noah Mendenhall. Menden, uh, Mr. Mendenhall is from our uh, Idaho State University admissions office. In fact, he is the recruitment specialist and coordinator and has been doing work with uh, transfers. And so those are all terms that I'm not 100% familiar with, and I'm looking forward to this conversation. <laughs> Noah, welcome to Sweet Talk. Uh, glad to have you on board. How are you today? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Appreciate it. I'm doing very well. Uh, I uh, I actually prefer winter. It's my favorite season, so uh, wow. I'm I'm kind of disappointed <laughs> with the warming up. But you know, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. So yeah, well, glad to have you here, nonetheless. <laughs> and uh, I'm I'm hopeful that you had a great winter. We're going to be talking about what you do uh, over there in the admissions office, but could we begin a little bit? Maybe you would give a share a little background about yourself, who you who you are, and, and then we'll get into what you're doing. Sure. Yeah. So uh, already said the title, you know, uh, recruitment specialist coordinator uh, specifically um, with transfer students, but I also uh, cover kind of non-traditional students, adult learners, um, returning students, uh, things like that. So some other ones that are kind of outside of you know, the, the, the traditional scheme. Um, I've been with Idaho State University uh, for four and a half years now. So I was an admissions advisor for two years. So primarily focusing on new student uh, freshman recruitment um, and then transitioned over to uh, the transfer role uh, for about two and a half years now. Um, I'm also a graduate student with the university. I didn't complete my undergraduate degree here um, at Idaho State University. I'm from Illinois originally. So I am an ISU alum. Um, but Illinois State University, not Idaho State University. So, uh, but uh, happy that I'll be able to be an alum after we get the, the master's degree wrapped up. 
You right, know, so that's that, super. It's from ISU to ISU, too. Yeah, that is exactly. great. <laughs> <laughs> and and what, is, what is your master's program in? I'm doing the master's of public administration. Okay. Uh, yeah, I knew you were going to say that. I knew that. Uh, <laughs> that's that's where I got my master's degree from. Yeah, I'm loving the program uh, and the instructors. I think it's fantastic. And uh, the fact that they uh, have really adapted to Zoom even before the pandemic, but especially mm -hmm. since then, I think it's a great option for, uh, you know, mid-career folks to try and finish out a master's degree as well. So anyways. excellent. Yeah, Good no, on no. you. And thanks Excellent. for helping out there in the admissions office. Uh, hey, let's go ahead and get into this a bit here. Uh, admissions is, is one of the key departments for any college or university. They do a, a, a lion's share of work in, in outreach and talking with students. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, what is the day look like for somebody who's working in admissions in your role? What are you doing all day long? Sure. Yeah. I mean, the key thing, like you said before, is communication. So we're really um, focusing on, you know, being available to students whenever questions come up. Um, you know, it's a, it's a lot of communication throughout the day. Quite often, we'll, we're getting quite a few emails, uh, you know, out of the blue, phone calls as well. I think a lot of times admissions can be, you know, a little bit of a, a central operating for the university as well. You know, I think we end up with a lot of people who don't necessarily know where else they're supposed to go. So if we can answer their questions, uh, we certainly do. But if it's something, you know, outside of our purview, we'll uh, hand them off to uh, whoever is uh, the best person for them to speak to. And I think that's another key aspect of our job is not always that we have to know the answer to every question. But if we don't know the answer to the question, I think it's important that we know who they should speak to, to get that question answered. So they're not necessarily playing uh, you know, a game of handoff from person to person. So yeah. a lot of communication, um, specifically, you know, in my role on more of the advising side, you know, we're talking about financial aid scholarships, obviously mm -hmm. the admissions process itself, kind of what our next steps are, you know, getting them through a lot of times what the rest of their year looks like before they start um, enrolling with ISU. Um, we do have our other, you know, uh, side of the admissions office, our evaluators who are actually processing the documents, transcripts, of evaluating and getting students admitted. Um, and, but we do a lot more of the contact side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I'm just kind of curious, so you are located here at, at Idaho State University or are you elsewhere? Yeah, so I, um, uh, myself personally, I'm uh, a, a little bit everywhere. So um, I uh, am quite often there on the Pocatello campus, mm -hmm. uh, taking, uh, you know, campus visits. That's a big part of our job as well. Thanks for pointing that. I didn't mention it, but um, we have a uh, regular daily campus visits. And so quite often, uh, myself and other advisors need to be available to sit down um, with prospective students and their families to, you know, answer a lot of those questions. So that's a, a big part of it. Um, I also myself personally spend uh, a day a week over at uh, College of Eastern Idaho to speak with prospective transfer students and be available there for them in their transfer office. Um, the job also uh, includes quite a bit of travel, you know, going to college fairs. Uh, so going to, you know, CSI, CEI, we have some mm -hmm. other folks that help out with the CWI and the NIC um, college fairs, but um, the other admissions advisors who focus more on new freshmen are spending a, a lot of their time at the local high schools or, you know, whatever their region's high schools are as well to mm -hmm. be there and available and meeting with students. So, um, yes, travel is another big aspect of it as well. Yeah. So, so you, you no, are staying very busy. Sorry, Paul, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. no. So, no, I, I, I always be curious um, when someone um, goes to admission, do, is it that they, um, you know, if they call admission, do they get assigned someone who work with them as they go through the admission process? Or is this one thing where they, they're just, uh, you know, whoever answers the phone, that's the person that they work with that time. How does that work when they, someone approaches the admissions, they want to come in? Um, yeah, it really kind of varies. So we do have it broken down um, by by territories to some degree. So, um, you know, for instance, the Magic Valley is a territory um, and uh, Cecilia uh, Magallon, um, one of our admissions advisors, she handles uh, primarily all the students from the Magic Valley schools. And so she's their primary point of contact. Those are the students and the schools that she communicates with. And so quite often those students will have her contact information 
information already and will reach out to her. If on the other uh, hand, they're just calling the office, um, it may be just a matter of who's available. So, you know, uh, our uh, administrative assistant, Brandon, mm -hmm. he may just transfer um, to, you know, whoever may be available or in the office at that point in time. For campus visits, our uh, campus visit coordinator, Brooke, she really does try and match up students with whoever their admissions advisor is, if possible. Um, but uh, we don't have all of our admission staff here on the Pocatello campus. There are quite a few um, regional. So um, Cecilia lives in Jerome. Um, uh, we have uh, several admissions advisors in the Treasure Valley on the Meridian campus and a, a advisor up in uh, North Idaho and Coeur d'Alene as well. So obviously, you know, they can't really be here to take visits whenever they come to Pocatello. So in that case, you know, it kind of goes off of, of availability. But um, so we do try and, and, and build a relationship and communicate with students regularly but if it's more of just a just a call then it can kind of be whoever may be available at that time sure sure really good and, and i i'm just curious when you say you're working with the visitors i mean the university <coughs> has this ambassador program mm -hmm. also and uh, in fact one of our one of our cpis here uh, haley is she's she takes people around all the time do you work hand in hand with those ambassadors yeah, the ambassadors are really a fundamental part of the, you know, Office of Admissions and, and what we do working with prospective students, you know, their primary role, you know, on a day to day basis is the campus tours. Uh, so the ambassadors uh, take our campus visitors out uh, on a campus walking tour that's about an hour long, show them around, you know, share about their experience as well. And it's a really key part of, you know, the visit experience, because I think we all uh, know oftentimes students are much more interested in speaking with current students rather than somebody who yeah. you know potentially has been out of school for 10 years or something along those lines you know a little bit uh, more relatable but the ambassador's work doesn't just stop there they're very busy outside of the campus tours as well I mean they do a lot of pre-visit communication a lot of post-visit communication uh, they do a lot of handwriting of letters as well to prospective students to to build a relationship with them as well um, we also have on on our website, an area where students can go uh, to um, get in touch with one of the ambassadors directly as well, if they'd like to speak with a you know a current student to learn more about their experience. So they can't cannot uh, you know say enough how important the ambassador's role is to um, you know our recruitment efforts and to building that relationship um, with students uh, and and they're fantastic so yeah a large part of, of it is working um, with the ambassadors uh, as well um, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. uh, you know it's kind of a you know if if I have my visit before they go out on a tour I'll speak with the ambassador that's taking that visit out on the tour to try and give them you know a little of what I've learned and if the parents have any specific questions or the students want to see anything and vice versa if the ambassador has given their tour ahead of when we're going to sit down and have a visit if there's any questions that came up that maybe they couldn't answer or um, they just want to share some things with me they'll definitely come have a chat with me so that we can make sure you know everybody's getting exactly sure. what they're hoping for out of the visit so Really so good. I have a question. Um, a lot of what we've talked about right now are contacts that you guys have made through uh, various outreach. But what's the admission process like for someone who has no clue, right? Let's say there's someone who wants to go back to ISU and they've had no contact with anyone. What, how, what will their process look like? Like what should they know to, to uh, contact for admissions or how to get enrolled? Sure. I mean, I think, you know, the easiest thing if somebody just wants to, you know, find out what their process looks like is maybe just to give us a call or, or send us an email um, if they don't want to talk on the phone. I mean, nowadays, a lot of people, you know, maybe prefer not to chat over the phone sometimes. So, uh, but anyways, uh and then they'll get connected with somebody to to help them. I mean, uh, regardless of of whether you've been in school or or uh, you know fresh out of school or whether it's been you know ten years, fifteen years since you graduated from high school, the process really doesn't vary. 
uh, much. So, you know, if we have a non-traditional student mm -hmm. who's been out of school, out of high school for 15 years and is coming in as a new freshman, ultimately, we still just need their final high school transcript to get them admitted. Uh, and we do waive all of the application fees for Idaho high school graduates. And that's regardless of whether it was recent or uh, previous. So students can go onto the website, uh, hit apply uh, up at the top. It's really easy to find. Um, we're discussing undergraduate students, so that would be the application that they would want to fill out. The nice thing about when they go in and create an account on the application website is if they complete an application, fantastic, but if they at least create an account, that gets us their contact information so that we can start communicating with them again. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point, we'll kind of get in touch with them as well if they stop you know, midway during the process or something like that to try and reach out and assist um, as well. But the application only takes about 10 minutes to do, no writing required. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, we do waive the application fee for all Idaho high school graduates. If they're coming as a freshman, it's a little bit different, you know, for other student types. Um, but then um, other than just completing the application, we'll just have to have them get us their final high school transcripts. It does have to be official. So it does have to come directly from their high school to us. Sometimes that's a matter of just calling the school and having them, you know, email, fax, mail a copy, whatever works best for the school. Other schools have shifted to parchment or another online service to send documents. And so um, the school may just tell the student to go online and request it that way as well. Um, but generally, it's a really easy um, process, regardless of whether, you know, you've been in school recently or not. Yeah, so I I have a question, you mm -hmm. know, because we're talking about people come in late, but um, what about out of state people that might be coming in new or transferring? Mm -hmm. uh, you, I know you can give them a, a, a sense of what the campus life is like, but do you have any sort of infrastructure available to show them what Pocatello is like? Um, because they'll be coming from out of state. That's a good question. I, I, we have our um, online virtual visit, um, which is uh, really neat, but I do think it's primarily focused around, you know, the university campus and not so much uh, Pocatello. So I don't know that we necessarily have any resources to give them, you know, more specific information on the community other than, you know, direct communication, chatting about it. And that is, you know, a question that often comes up with out-of-state students is, you know, wanting to get a little bit more information about Pocatello uh, and, you know, what things are like. Um, so that's a that's a great point, Paul. I, I don't know that we have a, a great, you know, resource for students to find other than doing a little bit of research themselves. So mm -hmm. something to think about. Yeah, that is a good question too. Hey, hey, you know, we're getting a little bit short on time. I wanted to ask a little bit. What is a, what? What do you do with transfer? What does that mean to you? If somebody says I'm a transfer student, what is that? Yeah, so a transfer student, kind of by definition, is somebody who has completed at least 14 credits, uh, college credits, since they graduated from high school. That's yeah. where they break the barrier between being a new freshman and a transfer student. And so um, at that point, you know, the process, the admissions process shifts to not needing a final high school transcript, but just needing whatever documentation they have, you know, from their uh, college. So if it's, you know, College of Eastern Idaho, or if it's technical institute, um, we would just need an official transcript sent over from them. And we do have to have transcripts sent from every institution a student has attended. So that can sometimes be a bit of a barrier for students knowing that they need to send transcripts separately. Um, but we do have to have the full academic history, unfortunately. Um, but uh, and then there's obviously a step with those students that freshmen don't worry about, and that's their credit articulation. And so after we get students admitted, their transcripts go to the registrar's office and they complete that articulation within about five to seven business days to so, show students how courses have transferred, you know, what their progress towards a degree at ISU looks like. Um, and honestly, that uh, is fantastic, that five to seven business day turnaround time, because at a lot of other institutions, students are waiting you know, months uh, sometimes to see how their credits have transferred after they've been admitted. Oftentimes, students may not know until the summer uh, before they're starting classes in, in August for a fall semester. So that mm -hmm. is one thing that I think is fantastic that the registrar's office does is those quick turnaround times on articulation. 
When you say articulation, just for those who are out there, and yeah. I used to be one of those, mm -hmm. articulation had no meaning to me. I go, yeah, what the heck definitely. is an articulation? You know, is that yeah. some kind of an article that we got to write? You know, oh, but you're talking about if somebody has some credits, how they transfer across and can count towards any program they're doing here. Is that correct? Yeah. So, you know, articulation is kind of the jargon term or the official term for course equivalencies. So uh, sitting down and seeing whether biology, you know, whatever it may be, 101 at CSI is equivalent to biology 1101 mm -hmm. at ISU, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Um, so that's what the, the articulation process is, is that equivalencies. Gotcha. So on that articulation process, um, Noah, is, is it like a kind of standard standardized um, so that you know what equals what? Or do you, sometimes do you have to actually go to a program and say, hey, we have this. Can you give us an assessment on how we should articulate mm -hmm. this? Yeah, it's both. Uh, so there are plenty of it, there. So for schools that we have a lot of transfer students from, a lot of those things are already built out. So, you know, if we have students coming from CEI, CSI, it's really easy to show them how their courses are going to transfer because we essentially have their entire catalog already transferred and, and documented as to how are those courses are going to articulate, you know, kind of getting back to out-of-state students, like you mentioned earlier, um, that is an area where um, uh, they have to go through the articulation process and the registrar's office is often establishing equivalency for the first time. So um, they're going through and doing that. And then they do sometimes need to check with the program to see if that's going to be an equivalent class. Now, um, oftentimes students uh, with higher level credit will need to go through a petition process of so 300 or 400 level classes. They have to go through a petition process for the department to decide whether that course is going to be an equivalent class or not. Um, and so uh, the initial review happens by the rest registrar's office, that first review, and then students can work on that petition with their academic advisor and the appropriate department for a, a second review. Um, so lower level courses, pretty easy breezy. Some of the higher level courses, if there's not an established equivalency, they do have to go in and work with the departments. Right, right. That That's awesome. Great question to ask, Paul. Hey, no, I'm not sure if you heard, but our timer went off and, and we haven't really gotten through all the questions we'd like, but we, we try to keep this kind of tight. However, one thing that's very, very important is that we give you the opportunity mm -hmm. to say, hey, if somebody has a question, here's how you can get hold of me or my my office. Would you would you mind telling the audience out there if they had a question, they want to reach out mm -hmm. to Idaho State University's admissions team, you know, what's the best way for them to do that? Yeah, for sure. Well, anybody's more than welcome to, to reach out to me directly, regardless of what your student type is, you know, whether you're freshman, transfer, anything else, I'm more than happy to help. Um, students can give me a call at 208-221-4915. Or email me. Uh, it's mendnoa at isu.edu. So that's M is in Mary, E is in elephant, N is in Nancy, D is in dog, Noah, N O A H at isu.edu. Um, and then if they'd write, if they'd rather just reach out to admissions generally, uh, the number is 208 282 2123 or admis at isu.edu, just A D. M I S S at ISU.edu. The other thing is if anybody just wants to book an appointment, uh, myself and all of the other admissions advisors do have our book me links just available on the website. So if you search admissions advisor on the website should be the first thing that comes up and that's going to show you everybody's name, contact information and book me link. It also shows you what school or territory they cover. So you can actually find your exact person there yourself as well. If you want to go straight to that. Um, so they can, you can do that as well. Well, and I think the book me links are the book me appointments are great. So we can really sit down and have a discussion uh, about things with a little bit more time. But uh, anyways, yeah. very good. Thank you, Noah. Thanks for uh, for being on board our our sweet talk today. And thank you for all the excellent information that you you've shared. Uh, for those who are out there, uh, we've had the uh, the pleasure of talking with Noah Mendenhall, who is one of our our universities on campus here in Pocatello. Uh, let me see, get this right. He's a recruitment specialist and coordinator, but also does a lot of work with transfers and has been a wealth of knowledge today. Uh, what an 
what an amazing learning this has been for me of how you integrate so well with the registrar's office, with other counselors, offsite, high school folks, the, uh, the ambassador team. It, it, it's truly a, a nice overall team. So you've represented very, very well, Noah. Thank you for sharing all of that information. Paul, Angela, uh, it's been awesome to carry on with this uh, continuing stream of, of, of uh, podcasts we have. Thank you for helping set that up. Paul, I mean, maybe it's time for you to, to do your thing and help us wrap it's this time, up. Time to wrap do my it thing. up. No, remember? No, Noah, again, thank you so much for being on the show. Uh, it was super informative. Uh, you're so knowledgeable about that department. Um, I'm it, a lot of information. Mm -hmm. um, Angie, thank you so much for um, having Noah, getting, arranging Noah to be on today and uh, all you do. And uh, Gary, I can't do this without you, man. <laughs> oh, y'all are doing great. Noah, thanks again, everybody. Y'all yeah, be safe so out there. Now, if someone wants to get a hold of us, you can visit our website at cetrain.isu.edu. Uh, you can email us at cetrain.isu.edu, and you can call us at 208-282-3372. And if you'd like this podcast and uh, the content that we provide, please like, share, subscribe. It does uh, help create a larger audience and get our information out. I really appreciate it. Thank you all so much. Be safe.